If you know a thing, speak it. Yes, yes. And I operate by the principle as well. Salafis, because they say, oh, we follow all four schools. And I argued with them many times, it's impossible. You can't follow all four schools, because you would have to be following all four usul. And the usul contradict, they don't agree. That's why they're different schools. You can't follow four usul, and, and in one fiqh mas'ala, you're validating the, the usul of one school, and invalidating the other three. And then when you switch from that fiqh mas'ala to another one, from another madhab, because your nafs are telling you, oh, this is what I like the most, this is what makes the most sense to me. So then you're, then you're going away from the fiqh, usul al uh, fiqh that you already accepted and validated and dismissed all the others. Now you're going to dismiss that one and go to three of the others. Which one, and, and that's what's Salafis. going on in the background. The no, this is the Salafis. The ones who say we follow all four schools. <laughs> in the background, they don't look openly, outwardly, they're dancing from fiqh masa'il, from one fiqh masala to another one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the background, in the background, underneath dodging between fiqh masa'il, they're dodging from usul to usul to usul. And when they accept the one usul, they're saying that's because it's closest to the Quran and the Sunnah, the, the, the mass Allah. They're talking about the mass Allah. But what about the, the asal behind it? What about the, the usul behind that fiqh mass Allah? Now, you see how they, in the background, they're dancing from one usul to another. Okay. So they're invalidating all of them. They're actually invalidating them all. And that's what the munafiqeen do. They say, oh, we believe in this, when they're with one position of things, one group of people, for example, who hold to one position, and then they go away from them with another group, but we believe in this, not really that. So that's what they're doing with fiqhi usul, actually. They're, they're dancing from, we accept this and reject the other three, and then they go and reject that one that they just validated, and, and reject that together with two of the others and say, we cling to this one now. And they do it in all the fiqh. And just last time I see you attacking uh, Sheikh yeah. yeah. Muhammad. Dayuf. Yes. Why? Because last Dayuf time... Dayuf I... Kabira. Because Why? he brings down non-mahram women uh -huh. that are not mahram for him. And he puts them giving da'wah with males. And he's training... This is Tabarruj. And he's training okay. the woman to argue with the man. So by the time she gets married now, she's already been cultured into arguing with men. Now she's going to argue <laughs> with her husband. She's going to argue with her husband now. When her husband mm -hmm. says something she disagrees with, now she's going to start fighting and arguing with him. Because she's already been trained to fight and argue with men. Right, right. He's a day youth. Listen. قال الرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يدخل الجنة الديوف. Simple. And another one. If he wants to play around with the verses of the Quran, like قرن في بيوتكم. If he wants to play with that. قال الرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم المراء في القرآن كفر. And to play with the Sunnah is the same as playing with the Quran. Because we understand the Quran through the Sunnah. So he falls into that if he wants to play with the Sunnah as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And, and if they're not mahram for him, where is he meeting them? How is he meeting them? How is he arranging with them to come down to this spot? It's a big mistake, he did. If he's and he keep doing it. Ikhtilat. If he's not doing ikhtilat, mukhalata, khulwa, imtizaj, into Jack. If he's not doing any of those things, how do they come down there? How do they make the decision to come here and to argue with men? That's it. Yeah, I see. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not a, a mufti. <laughs> no, no. I don't. I, I would never say I'm a mufti. Uh, I would never even call myself sheikh, uh, even out of respect. I don't like when people call okay. me. I don't like it. Uh, mm. It makes me feel bad because. Zmira. People shouldn't, uh, yeah, Zmira. basically. Zmira. Yeah. Yeah, Zmira. Then I'm going against my own principles. Yeah, if somebody gets called Sheikh, it's not something that 
if it's out of respect, yes, yes, I, I accept that. If it's out of respect, I'm not going to like condemn someone to their face for saying a respect title. Look, this man's an Arab, right? You look Egyptian, am I correct? No, sir, Algerian. Okay, North Africa. North Africa. Right. So if he said to me, Ya yeah, Shaykh, mashallah, I accept it from him because he's Arab. He knows that the Shaykh meaning, doesn't mean means, Alim. He knows it doesn't mean Alim, it's just a respect guy. Respect, yeah, yeah. But if some English person came to me now, even if the same brother said Ya yeah, Shaykh to me, in front of an English convert, I'm going to clarify for them I'm not an Alim. Okay, I'm going to clarify. It's different. I don't want this English person to think that he's calling me Sheikh because I'm an Alim or a Mufti or something. And I have the, the authority. The only authority I have is what Allah has granted me as a Muslim, like any other Muslim. Amr bil ma'rufi wa nahi anil munkari and all the normal duties that we have.